Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here doing a review for Deadpool 2. As you guys can see, I'm wearing my Deadpool mask. I won't be wearing this the whole time because it is like, I'll die if I try to do the whole review like this. But when I get to the spoiler section, I'll take this off and I'll just put my hat on and that way I'll kind of survive the rest of this video. But just going through it, Deadpool 2 was super fun. I really enjoyed it. I feel like I liked it a little bit more than the first one. I really loved the first one. And this one, I think, kind of upped the ante. Like, and it's, it's interesting how they did it because I felt like the action for this one um wasn't as good but that's mostly because i really like deadpool fighting because he kind of fights like a ninja for the most part so i was like all right i love that you know the whole freeway scene from the first movie was just really really great i just thought it was really well done and it was like really it was kind of martial arts based it was a lot of close quarter stuff this it's a lot more bombastic there are of course more characters so i think that kind of takes away from deadpool specific focus stuff but then there's also some really great stuff they have some visual stuff with domino that's cool there's an ending like the ending fight is really really freaking awesome um so i love they, they just do some stuff that's cool and then even though i feel like just a tiny bit that the action wasn't as cool to me i thought the comedy was like way better i, I just thought i just thought it worked i just thought they like kind of threw a lot more into it in this one even though they made a lot of jokes that a lot of people could probably see coming some of the stuff you know jokes that you may have made for me personally, I just loved all of them. Uh, There's a million, you know, more references and stuff like that. So I was like, well, that's pretty cool. I know, you know, I understand this, I understand that. I don't know if any of that really matters because of how they're doing, like, the timelines and, you know, all this stuff with all the different x -Men movies. So it probably doesn't even make a difference what references they throw in. But they introduced some stuff where I was like, oh, I know that from the comics. And, yeah, you know, little jokes here and there. So I thought that was cool. But all in all, definitely thought it was a good movie. Uh, like I said, for me, I do think I like it just a little bit more. I think um, all the characters are pretty cool. Um, the story is yeah, admittedly super simple. Uh, the story for the first one was simple too. Uh, this one I think is almost even a little bit lighter than the first one and that might be one of the things that kind of takes it down just a little bit for some people uh, compared to the first movie because that was like, you know, even though it was simple, like the whole point was like, oh, you know, the main villain of the movie is even like just a simple villain who's not that big of a deal. But in this, it's almost even lighter than that because there's you know obviously it's cable so everybody knows is you know even if you don't know from the just from watching the trailers you kind of learn like okay cable's technically kind of a good guy from the future and stuff like that so it's like you know it's even lighter a little bit that there's not necessarily like a big bad villain you know going throughout it so it's like okay you know it's kind of one of those somewhat lighter things so i kind of like the way it was handled a little bit towards the end but definitely thought it was interesting um definitely enjoyed it there's some stuff that kind of sucks but i'll have to get to that for spoilers it doesn't really suck for the movie it's just little stuff where i was like oh i didn't know it was going to be specifically like that and i wish it was like you know just a little bit different but as far as the movie itself goes i thought the comedy you know they kind of upped the ante on the comedy and it was even funnier i thought the action was brought down like a tiny bit and that was just you know my personal preference on the style of action so definitely really crazy still definitely worth checking out and I, I kind of want to see it again. So it's definitely, you know, like I said, for me, I think it's a really good movie. Definitely funny. The action is good. It's just, you know, those little kind of story elements where it's just like, okay, you know, super light here. Very, very simple plot. Um, not as emotionally driven, even though the first one, you know, all comedy and killing. Still a bit, you know, emotional. It's like, I got to go get my girlfriend and this is him, you know, saving a kid, which can be emotional. But I feel like it wasn't exactly done super emotionally. Like they had emotional parts, but... I felt like it didn't actually, oddly enough, I felt like the more emotional stuff didn't really tie into the main story as it was continuing. It was like other stuff that had already happened. There was really the emotional uh, pull for the movie, but still really enjoyed it. Definitely thought it was hilarious. So I highly recommend it. Um, officially getting into the spoiler section so I can I can breathe because that is killing. That was crazy. So getting into the spoilers of the film, um, I want to start with the story. The main thing that I think was kind of lacking is that it just kind of felt like it was kind of shooting through. I still really loved it because it was just like, okay, you know, it's Deadpool. It's just funny and stuff like that. But also knowing Cable, you know, being a fan of the comics, it was like, all right, how far can they really go with the epic story? Because I was curious. I was like, are they going to go Days of Future Past? Like, obviously, we already have those movies. So it was like, they aren't going to go that whole route with it. But it was like, what are they going to do? And admittedly, it was nothing. Like, the future didn't <laughs> really mean anything. It wasn't even like the kid was this big bad villain. Like, he killed you know, some people because he was powerful, but 
there's really nothing to it. It was just like, really, the only reason Cable went back was because his family died. And it's like, oh, that's like the simplest thing in the universe. That's even more simplistic than the actual comic story where it's like, I'm trying to save the entire future. He was just like, yeah, I just want to save my family because I didn't care that he killed all these other people. But then my family, you know, like we fought a bunch of times. But then as soon as my family died, that's when I went back. And it was like, oh, that's super duper simple. And it was like, I felt like they could have had it a bit more complex, like just a little bit. And it was just like so insanely simplified. It was just like, yeah, I'm just going back to kill this kid because my family died. It wasn't like the battle to save the future or any of the other stuff that I thought it was going to be. It wasn't nearly as intense. It just felt like, okay, he wants to kill the kid for revenge. And it's not even like revenge for the planet. It was just like this specific small group, you know, his family. So, you know, I get it from his, you know, from his standpoint, I totally understand. But it was just like, okay, you know, that's a little bit smaller than I was hoping for. Cause I was kind of curious what they were going to do with the future element and they really did nothing it was just like his family died in the future so that's why he went back in time to kill the kid it wasn't to save anything it was just to save his family so it's like okay that's way simpler than the cool element of i'm like saving the whole timeline in the future and maybe this guy ends up helping apocalypse you know they could totally do it and even make jokes about it where it's like oh yeah you didn't see him in those other movies but he was totally important back then you know they could have made those jokes because that's what deadpool does um but i still enjoyed it just going through like the action with Cable I thought was cool. Um, the scene where they're on, uh, like, the convoy truck, I thought that was definitely... That was probably one of my favorite... That was probably my favorite action scene outside of just the legitimate fight of uh, Colossus versus Juggernaut because it was like, all right, this is super cool. Um, you know, the stuff with Domino and the way they're fighting and the... Um, it's not a train, but every time I saw it, I kept thinking of, it like, it looked like a train. Um, but the, the convoy, the truck, excuse me, like, breaking apart and just how they were kind of going through that fight, I thought it was really cool. And then, of course, it ends with Juggernaut, which I thought was super sweet. Um, and I was curious. And, of course, they totally glanced, like, right over it because um, super nerd mode. But when they were talking about it, I was like, okay, you know, they were like, I got to make, you know, got to take down the biggest guy uh, in here and stuff. And so it was like this loud boom. I was like, okay, well, I wonder who it's going to be because it's not Juggernaut because, once again, comic super nerd mode, Juggernaut's powers can't be taken out by the uh, power dampener because his his powers are not mutant based his powers are magic so i was like it's not gonna be juggernaut because you know they can't take his powers away like that and that doesn't work and then it was juggernaut and i was like mm, they're gonna skip over that and they totally did they didn't bring it up in any way shape or form so i was like it's fine yeah it's totally fine but i was like technically the necklace thing wouldn't have worked on him because his powers are you know they're, they're magic based so it was just interesting i was like well, they're not gonna talk about that and it was fine i still loved it because it was juggernaut and it was sweet and he was huge um so that was cool um i i I know they couldn't do it, but I would have loved it if, for whatever reason, he just randomly found his costume, because <laughs> they were doing CG anyway, so it would have been sweet if he wasn't just in the prison outfit the whole time, like, he actually had his costume, which, they'll probably do that, um, you know, hopefully we get, like, a third movie, um, because at the very end, when he's, like, in, everybody's walking away, he is climbing out of that pool, they show it for, like, a quick second, but he's climbing out of the pool at the end of the movie, so he's not, you know, he didn't die, he wasn't trapped in there, he was climbing out on his own, so... They can totally bring him back um, in another movie, so that would be really cool. Of course, all the references were super awesome, aside from... Uh, they even referenced, like, the actual comics he's in, which I thought was super funny. Uh, that was probably, like, my favorite reference, where he's like, you know, I always wanted to meet you, and, was, and he, like, just lists off his actual comic book appearances and the numbers and stuff, and I thought that was, like, the funniest thing that he actually talked about, specifically the comic numbers. So I thought that was funny, but um them going to the x-mansion that was great where it's just like they had everybody in the other room and then he's like you know where is everybody like can't this studio throw us a bone and then they just had everybody in a room for like three seconds in costume and everything just for that quick little joke and they just closed the door and i was like that was awesome that was a really great reference so i love that um of course cable is called thanos because you, you got to make that one um they make the dc universe joke about you know things being so dark and stuff but you know i definitely love the references um some of the other stuff that they did like I totally can't remember the guy's name, but all, you know, the alien member of, you know, the super short X-Force, uh, team, he was from Mojo World, so I was like, well, that's super cool, they referenced Mojo World, um, so that, that I thought was just really cool, the X-Force thing in general, obviously a cool reference there, but they all got killed off, so in the third movie, that'll officially be, you know, the X-Force team of Deadpool, Cable, Domino, um, uh, Fire Fist, I think I remember if I remember right his name. So you know we'll we'll have our X Force. They did have the X Force uh, reference as far as the costume goes. For anyone who doesn't know this and you know saw the movie, uh, when they have like the big explosion and Deadpool suit is basically all black. That's his X Force costume, and that's like 
basically when they go stealth, that's what he wears. It's the uh, gray outfit instead of his red outfit. So I was like, even when I saw that in the trailer, I knew that that's what they were doing. I thought it was a, an official outfit. So I like that they actually did it where he didn't actually change costumes. They just made it where it was like, it was basically just soot on his costume and they made it gray. And I was like, oh, that's a cool way to do it. He didn't actually change and they made the new costume. It was just like, oh, there's an explosion and now his suit's kind of gray. That was actually like a very specific reference to his actual X-Force uh, costume. So I love that for sure. Um, and all in all, I thought it was just a really fun movie. Like I said, just, you know, the little things with the story was like, oh, you know, super simple as far as the revenge plot and the future stuff. Um, I was surprised at the very beginning and I was curious uh, how they were going to play it. Cause it was like, all right, going into it, you know, crazy montage. He's, you know, decapitating people, fighting the Yakuza and, uh, all these different gangs and stuff. I was like, okay, that's cool. Gets to the last one, which I love when they had uh, the guy running in slow motion, but everything else behind him was at normal speed. Like, all these people are dying, and he's running, like, slow motion. So I just love that scene uh, for the visuals of it. But, you know, they have it, and it was like, oh, crap. You know, it's an emotional story where they actually have Deadpool, like, sad and suffering because his girlfriend gets killed. So I was very surprised by how they actually had, like, this emotional opening. And then it went into um, the actual credits, and I was like, oh, this is going to be, like, an actual serious emotional opening and then like the first visual i was like oh this isn't serious they're doing james bond and it was super funny and i was like okay they had like and it was funny because the music was playing or that was playing with it was an emotional song so it was like this emotional moment and then i was looking at the visuals because i was like oh man this is actually like a dark you know like a serious opening and then i noticed they were doing like all the katanas like spreading out like flowers and petals and stuff and i was like this is james bond they're doing a james bond thing and then they started just throwing in just actual other movies like flash dance and stuff and um it was just funny i was like okay this is silly and then of course they went back to what they did in the first movie with like wait a minute did they just kill her and stuff like that so i was like okay it was super funny and like I, and that was before even the tech showed up as soon as i noticed like the way they did the visuals and it's like a bunch of deadpools like pointing guns and stuff i was like this is just james bond and they're being super dumb with it but it is kind of emotional because it had the emotional song with it but then it's like all these stupid themes um like the james bond stuff going on and then the tech starts showing up so definitely funny and i like the way that was handled for sure because it it was a bit emotional it's like oh i didn't see that one coming it actually had a serious start to it and then you know went into you know some of the you know, it was a nice transition because like i said the song was actually like emotional and it was like slow paced and stuff when it started and then you start reading the words and then seeing all the visuals of james bond and it's like okay that was that was a good job and then like i said them just legitimately throwing in random other movies that's a part of the opening so definitely thought it was funny uh the x-force thing was absolutely hilarious with all of them getting killed off um except for peter technically uh depending on how they decide to do it you know with the mid credit scenes um deadpool does you know he, he goes back in time and he technically saves her so she could be alive if they can get the actress uh marina bachran if they can get her back for three then they could be like yep that totally happened and you know so she's alive for three and then if they can't get her uh, which Gotham is ending for anyone who doesn't know she's on Gotham, but that show's getting, you know, that, that's going off. So they might be able to get her back. Um, but if not, then they can just be like, yeah, that didn't actually happen. It was just like, you know, silly mid credit sequence. But I love that for sure. That was one of the best parts, without a doubt, was him going back in time and him uh, killing the crappy Deadpool from X Men Origins and then him basically killing himself uh, with Ryan Reynolds being like, you know, welcome to the big leagues and it's the Green Lantern thing and he just kills himself. So I thought that was, those were definitely uh, some of the best moments and they're, they're just so funny. Um, and it sucks. Uh, now I forgot to mention this for everybody, you know, that hasn't seen the movie yet, but of course there was no post credit sequence. They did have one. I recently heard um, they were going to do the baby Hitler thing where he went back in time and he was going to kill baby Hitler. And it was like, Oh man, it's super tough. And apparently he grabbed a marker and he drew it on. Like he drew the Hitler mustache on baby Hitler. And it was like, okay, maximum effort. But they kind of cut that. Cause it was sort of a, you know, from the reaction of the audience, it was kind of like an, Oh, sort of moment, like a little bit too far. So they ended up cutting that. But I think it's funny just hearing about it. Like, you know, he had to draw the mustache and it, it's all that just fits Deadpool. So, you know, they did have one, but they cut it. Cause it was just a little bit too, yeah, a little bit too tough, but Definitely enjoyed it. They, you do get the Juggernaut song at the end, because I totally missed that when Juggernaut came in, but that song, I was cracking up uh, during that end. So, like, me and my dad were both just laughing like crazy. So, that in itself was almost worth even though there was no um, scene, just hearing the actual song, because I totally missed it during the movie. That had me cracking up. So, I love that. Like, if you miss it, I wouldn't even, like, redo it. Just either go see the movie again, or you can probably find it online already, but... Look up the Juggernaut song from Deadpool 2. If you, like, missed it while you were watching it and you knew that there wasn't an end credit so you didn't stay, 
just listen to that because that stuff was absolutely hilarious and it was only like it was at the very end of the credits so i think it was only maybe like a 30 second song or something like that but it was so freaking funny just listening to that happen and i was like i totally missed this during the movie because it was like you know here's juggernaut totally missed the music but that ending song was just so freaking funny so definitely look that up uh, if you happen to miss it you know when you actually went to see it but definitely enjoyed the movie uh looking forward to what we get in the next one i'm curious if they will decide to go with yeah he totally did jump through time so he did end up saving her um well the other stuff doesn't have anything to actually do like they're talking about fixing the timelines and all that stuff so obviously that was just a joke um but that's like the you know him saving his girlfriend is like the one thing they could actually use as a part of the storyline because him killing you know ryan reynolds I guess technically it works because it's Deadpool. So Deadpool is Deadpool and not Ryan Reynolds. So, you know, they could technically say that that happened too if they care to make that joke again. Um, and be like, you know, Ryan Reynolds is dead. So he never made any other movies or something silly. Make a weird paradox joke. I don't know if they do that. But definitely looking forward to a third movie. Um, I'm excited to see where they go with it, especially having Cable in there. Um, them fixing, you know, the time machine or, you know, his uh, time device at the very end of the movie. I am curious what they're going to decide to do with that and just what they're going to have, you know, as a story. If they're going to go X-Force, who knows as far as, you know, the companies and the movie rights and what they're going to do with actors or possibly bringing in other actors. I know everybody wants to see Deadpool and Wolverine. I would still love that. Um, great jokes at the beginning with the, uh, I, I forget, the little music box of Logan and, he, you know, it's playing and it's him like on the, you know, on the stick. So I thought that was super funny. Um, so who knows? Maybe that dream will come true in the third movie. We'll actually see um Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in a Deadpool movie I doubt it but I would love to see that like everyone would but either way I'm looking forward to three um I think you know this one like I said I personally thought it was like just a little bit better uh than the first one but man the two good movies so I'm glad you know I'm glad this one worked and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it again naturally want to know what you guys thought about it so please comment below let me know your favorite parts of the movie at least favorite parts about it what would you guys want to see uh for a third deadpool i mean we have cable there we have domino we got fire fist um colossus was the one who's kind of a part of the x-force at the end i would love to see uh this is the one thing i mentioned that i thought kind of sucked kind of like everybody i wanted to see more of uh negasonic teenage warhead because she was like hardly in it at all like she technically only used her powers I think two times in the whole movie and it was when they first went up against fire fist because he was mad and he like he hit her first so she used her power to protect herself and then i think at the very end when they were fighting juggernaut those are literally the only two times we see her use her power yukio is like the same thing like we see her do like her lightning sort of whip thing and that was it and i was like oh okay and also her hair color was changing throughout the movie i don't know if you guys know it was like impossible not to notice because when she went into the fight i was like her hair is all pink and it was not all pink at all throughout the rest of the movie not that i noticed and then even during the uh mid credit sequence i was like her hair is like black and pink again so i was like i don't know if that was on purpose or if that's like a thing with her character because i have no idea who her character is because they call her yukio so i don't know what her like x-men name is even though negasonic teenage warhead is a totally different character in the comics too so i don't know but i was like man it sucks that we didn't get to see more of either of them really because i would have liked to have seen just both of them together especially because of how they did the silly stuff with yukio um where wade would always like even in the uh mid credit sequence when he leaves and then yukio's like bye wade and he like actually came back like bye yukio so i, I actually liked that like very very minimal interaction that they had throughout the movie but i would have liked to have seen them just like be friends because they were like just oddly cool with each other and it was just like that through the whole movie was just like you know they just like kind of like each other just like that so i would love to see them i have a bigger role in the next film but like i said definitely want to know what you guys want to see in the next one um any theories or anything like that i would assume considering they have juggernaut or you know the new juggernaut um that they will definitely utilize him again maybe we'll get to see him in the full costume which i think would be sweet um but other than that i don't know what they would do you know they got juggernaut i mean we've had it you know days of future it's like all the big stuff i could think of considering cable is involved it's like well they technically did all that stuff without cable so i don't know what they would do it would just be a random story with cable in it um and maybe they bring in a, a new bishop because they had him in uh, days of future past as well so i don't know a second bishop and stuff like that i don't know what they can do because all i'm thinking is like all the time travel stuff they've technically done so who knows where we'll go with it like I said, want to know what you guys thought about the movie and just what you guys want to see for a Deadpool 3 or if you even want one or, you know, this one kind of just didn't do it for you. We'd love to know that as well. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.